Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Wash away, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. Welcome to worship with the people of Abingdon United Methodist Church. On this Sunday, October 11th, we continue our, well, we conclude our series, Come to the Table, where we, where we have been looking at what it is to come to God's table, to experience bread and juice and, and, and the, the very real presence of God. This week, we turn back to Genesis chapter 18 with Abraham and Sarah encountering visitors, setting a feast, experiencing God in, in the promise of a miracle that's totally unexpected. Perhaps this week as we come into worship, we will, we will turn our attention to a God that comes in unexpected ways, in unexpected places, and makes promises of unexpected miracles. Let us experience the very real presence of God this morning as we worship together. As we begin worship today, I need to make a quick announcement. One of the most pressing concerns we have at the moment as a church is to determine if, when, and how we establish youth, children, and family ministries for fall and winter, and, and we need some help. Uh, as, as there have been some changes with the children's ministry team, we're looking for five people 
at least five people in this church who are willing to make phone calls and connect with families and, and help us survey just what the, the needs and desires of our families, our children, and our youth are uh, so we can make plans for the future. Uh, call, uh, you, you can contact uh, Susan Warnsman or myself and we will, we will put you to work. Let us worship our God. Welcome to worship with the people of Abingdon United Methodist Church. Week after week, we have been reminded that our God dwells with us, right here and right now. Our God is here in this time of worship, wherever we are and whoever we are. We now light candles in our many homes. Today, we light a candle to remind us that we are not alone in worship. Christ is present with us. We are present with one another. And we can still take Christ into the world with us online and as we go out from our homes. Let us pray. Our God, when we gather at tables, we whisper words of support. We pass food with gladness and goodwill, and perhaps even erupt with raucous laughter. May our time of worship be like our time at a table, growing closer to family and friends, building new relationships with acquaintances and strangers alike. And may we come to believe, gathered around a communion table, that miracles are possible. You are our God, and we worship you. We are filled with your gladness, and we know that miracles abound with you. Amen. Let us open our hearts to God as we hear the opening song.
raised to life, our God is able. In his name we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. Lift it up, defeat it the grave. Raised to life. Today's scripture comes to us from Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. The the Lord appeared to Abraham at the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent in the day's heat. He, He looked up and suddenly saw three men standing near him. As soon as he saw them, he, he ran from his tent entrance to greet them. He bowed deeply. He said, Sirs, if you would be so kind, don't just pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought to you so you can wash your feet and refresh yourselves under the tree. Let me offer you a little bread so you will feel stronger. And after that, you may leave your servant and go on your way, since you have visited your servant. They responded, Fine. Do just as you have said. So Abraham hurried to Sarah at his tent and said, Hurry, knead three sayas of the finest flour and make some baked goods. Abraham ran to the cattle, took a healthy young calf, and gave it to his young servant who prepared it quickly. And then Abraham took milk and butter and the calf that had been prepared and put the food in front of them and stood under the tree near them as they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, well, right, right here in the tent. Then one of the men said, I will definitely return to you about this time next year. Then your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now, now Abraham and Sarah were both very old, and Sarah was no longer menstruating. So Sarah laughed to herself, thinking, I'm no longer able to have children, and my husband's old. The Lord said to Abram, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Me, give birth at my age? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? When I return to you about this time next year, Sarah will have a son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Just as with Abraham and Sarah, in our culture today, uh, important things happen around shared meals. Important relationships and events are, are marked often by a shared meal. We have birthdays and anniversaries. Sometimes an anniversary is even uh, the recreation of a first date, whether it's going to the same restaurant or having a uh, same meal. Proms and homecomings often begin with groups going to dinner together. Business deals and politics often happen over, over a shared meal or, or a, a shared table. But it's not just the big stuff that creates memories or marks uh, specialness in our lives. It's also the everyday meals. You know, the, those meals together over, over a lifetime that form strong memories. I, some of you may be able to think back to childhood and, and remember your family sitting around the table and enjoying meals together. You may not remember any one particular evening You may not remember any one particular meal, but you have a memory of meals shared together. The the Bible, too, is full of stories of eating. In fact, most of the most important stories happen around community meals. Adam and Eve, they they encounter God after eating. (laughs) Maybe not the way they wanted to. This story today uh, of the Oaks of Mamre, we, 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 we have a, a shared meal that brings a miracle. The Passover, 
the Hebrew people captive in Egypt who, who have endured all kinds of unimaginable sufferings, they, they receive a promise that they're, they're to eat as quickly as possible that night and mark their doorway and, and God will pass over their homes as, as plagues are brought on Egypt. In other words, the fast food meal of the Bible resulted in God showing up and a miracle happening. Daniel and his friends express faith through food. Oh, there's a wedding at Cana where Jesus begins his ministry and turns water into wine. We, we have the feeding of the multitude along the Sea of Galilee, and we have the Last Supper, and these are just to name a few. Sarah and Abraham set out a feast to welcome strangers. They think that they're doing something like they've done a, a million times before her. They're fulfilling the law and offering hospitality. But what the visitors offer is not something that they want in return. I mean, Sarah and Abraham, they wanted a son. But I think Sarah's laughter here is, is probably anxious laughter. She was old. Childbirth was no longer something she was expecting, but maybe not something she was looking for. It was something that had become suddenly very dangerous and worrisome. They set out a meal for strangers. They extended the hospitality they were expected to, and something unexpected happened. God showed up in an unexpected way and made an unexpected promise. Um, a number of years ago, uh, one of my friends told me that um, there was going to be Dollar Burger Night downtown in Evanston and invited me to come along. Uh, Carrie and I both went to this meal, but the thing is, we didn't know each other yet. Uh, my friend invited me and Carrie's friend invited her, and there was a whole group from the seminary there. Now, Carrie had caught my eye. I don't think I registered on, uh, on her radar at all. And, and I thought, well, maybe I could, uh, maybe I could talk to her. Maybe, maybe we could strike up conversation. Maybe, maybe this is my, my moment. And, and as I sat there at the table right across from Carrie, I couldn't even hardly get her to look at me because she only had eyes for the Colombian ex-priest sitting next to her. She wasn't looking for what was right across the table. And, and I think that that's how it is with us often. Uh, sometimes we're not looking at what is happening right in front of us because we're, we're, we're looking elsewhere. And, and sometimes he, we, we aren't ready for God even though God is trying to get to work. The thing is, we may not be ready for God always, but God is always, always ready for us. It could only be by God's grace that this timid seminary student was able to win over Carrie Berry. God turned Sarah's anxious laughter to joyous laughter when Isaac was born. And our God is ready for us and invites us to sit and eat and talk and connect. And we can do that when we come right over here to a communion table, and I, and I don't mean physically, but, but in our own homes today, when we come to the communion table, we can, we can be with our God. We can look for what God is doing in our midst. You, you see, God can turn anxious laughter into joyous laughter. We, we may be sitting at our desk with a blank stare, worrying about our career or life goals, but God is at the table with us, and God will work miracles and bring joy. We might be at the kitchen table organizing ball schedules and family calendars, feeling overwhelmed by the pressures of parenthood, but God is at the table with us, and our God will work miracles and bring joy. We may be we may be sitting and poring over financial statements trying to figure out how we're going to make this work, but our God is sitting there with us. Our God will bring miracles and bring joy in our life. We might be hunched over the coffee table wondering how we will manage an aging parent 
or a family member needing extra care. But God is right there with us. And God will work miracles and bring joy. Let us come to the table, to God's table, and experience the hope that is Christ. And perhaps even hear the whisper of godly wisdom as we, as we bow in prayer, as we touch the bread, as we taste the fruit of the vine. We can now come to this table where Christ is present, where God is present in a very real way, in, in bread and in juice, where we can touch and taste a God that is full of promise for the future, who, who promises, promises life-changing miracles for, for God's people. As we gather today, we take this bread, we, we give thanks that the Lord God on the night before he died took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me over the elements here and the elements in your home? Gracious God, now pour out your Holy Spirit among us in this bread, in this cup, and among us, us your people. Be for us one body and blood that we will be one with Christ and one in mission and ministry to this world through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us take now the body of Christ. the blood of Christ. Let us pray over this feast that we have partaken in. Lord, we thank you for all that you do in this world and with us. May we today, as we, as we have tasted this bread and, 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 and juice, remember this is just a foretaste of all that we can experience in you. May we hope for new miracles every day. May we look for you to, to be in our lives in unexpected ways and to give us promise for a future together. In your name we pray, amen.
Just as the visitor stopped for a refreshing moment with Abraham and Sarah and then went on their way, so we too come and gather together, whether it's online or in person, to, to experience a refreshing moment with God and then to continue on our way, ready for whatever comes next, for whatever God is going to do in our lives. Let us go forth in peace. Our time of worship is at its end, but our time in Christ goes on and on. Amen.